Horticulture as a business is putting food on the table and money in the pockets of many Nigerians. It is a branch of agriculture that deals with the art, science, technology and business of vegetable garden plants growing. Welcome to Community Reports on Channels Television. I'm Victoria Ido. Today on the show, we would learn about the cultivation of plants, seed, flowers, seaweeds, lawns, planting edges and non-food crops on the show. We would also learn about the business of horticulture. So let's get to it. Trees, flowers and other plants, pleasant to be old. They come in different forms, shapes, textures and colors. Although some of these plants can grow without someone having to put a seed in the ground, the art of ensuring that plants continue to grow and multiply falls within an important part of agriculture known as horticulture. Horticulture is at the most basic level the science of cultivating fruits, vegetables, flowers, ornamental plants. It's also a branch of agriculture that covers the cultivation of medicinal plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, shrubs, mushrooms, algae, flowers, seaweeds, lawns, planting edges and non-fruit crops such as grass and ornamental trees and plants. Inside agriculture, horticulture contrasts with extensive field farming as well as animal husbandry. It also includes plant conservation, landscape restoration, landscape and garden design, construction and maintenance. place where we nurse plants, young plants, to they become mature and old enough to stand in big pots. This is just the beginning of propagation of the nursery plants. This is a stem propagation of this akalifa. The plant yes, the flowering plant. So it's, it's an edge plant and it also has med its medicinal properties also. So this is how we start. We put this is called a polythene bag. It has different sizes. So we put topsoil, manure, and we'll our stem cutting of the plants. And this plant is used for edges that is to decorate homes, plant across the edges. And it also has its medicinal properties also. So when you have it around your house, it's, it's not just for the beauty, it has its medicinal property. You can just, because some people, in Yoruba land, when they just give birth to children, they use the leaf to bait children to remove skin rash. So it's aside is aside being beautiful, it's medicinal too around the home. Moses Adelowoko is one horticulturist who has been feeling with the plant for the past two decades. Horticulture, in a layman's language, is divided into three areas. We have pomology olericulture and floriculture. Pomology has to do with fruits, plantain, banana, uh, mango, and water view. That is, that is the area. There is a section for that, and there are specialists who are supposed to be working on that. They have research team, entomologists, uh, virologists, and water view for pomology that is fruits. They have the same thing for vegetables, which is olericulture. Then floriculture is what is not particularly popular. When you talk of floriculture, we are talking of ornamental plants, the range of ornamental plants. And that is my own area of specialization. 
floriculture. We propagate various ornamental plants, trees, shrubs, annuals, perennials, as well as indoor plants, quite a wide range. Now, floriculture, a lot of people, you know, narrow it down to just ornamental plants. But when you produce ornamental plants, what do you do with it? You decorate external areas of structures, buildings, institutions, and what have you. And that is where landscaping come in. Horticulture, particularly ornamental horticulture, requires a lot of training. Training as an horticulturist in Nigeria comes in different forms. When you go to a school of agriculture at your OND level, the school of agriculture is like a polytechnic where they offer OND and HND. When you go there, even your agricultural training, you will have a little bit of floriculture or ornamental plants. They will just train you, I mean, talk about a few of them, and that's all. But sometime in uh, 1982, thereabout, HND students are now trained as landscape horticulturists, but they describe it as landscape technology for them. And this is meant for the students who pass through School of Greek uh, OND in general agriculture or School of Forestry, general forestry. So they are now able to come into their HND level. Unfortunately, the intake was very poor. The people coming for it. The, the, in most cases where you have specialization in other courses, when you talk of landscape horticulture, you probably have five, seven, or eight of them in the class. It, it's not popular as such, and it's still not popular till today. For Olu Shola Adekoya, his foyer into the world of flowers and plants was propelled by passion. I started a gorgeous business dated back in the 70s, when I was young in secondary school, because I'm a lover of plants, I started by collecting. Let me say, I was a collector then, collecting varieties of, of plants. I never knew I was going to turn into a venture. The training is uh, more or less of uh, experience over the years of doing the job. Then later, I invested deeply <coughs> in going for short, short courses, both locally and overseas. Just in case you've been wondering, is this a field meant for men alone? Let's meet a young lady who has her place cut out for her in this nature-based venture. I'm Alicia Galuatui. I'm the nursery manager here at the garden. I read plant science and I manage the nursery. I take care of the plants, I propagate, and I also sell plants to people. I educate them about plants, its usefulness to the society, its benefits to humans, because we have three kinds of plants. We have ornamental, medicinal, air purifying plants, indoor plants, different kinds of plants with different usefulness, and most people don't know about that. So I try to educate, so it's not just about selling plants or cultivating, I try to educate them about it. And we also have some punk plants that are beautiful but poisonous. Nigeria is blessed with relatively good weather, soil, and has comparative advantage in horticulture. But those in this field think the potential in this agricultural subsector have not been stretched. In Nigeria, the government is not uh, putting much or looking into that area unlike an advanced country whereby it's more or less like a source of income for them. Take for instance, 
Don't let me go too far. In Kenya, they engage nothing less than 4.5 million of their indigenous in horticulture. I'm not talking of aspect of culture, either by growing vegetables, ornamental plants, and whatever. But horticulture is not only limited to uh, ornamental plants alone, like I rightly said. Um, the, there is no much uh, interest or a sort of um, uh, government is not creating a maybe environment to make the venture a viable one. But the culture can actually add to the GDP of Nigeria if it is well announced. And um, presently, uh, the research has told us that government, I mean, the, the contribution of the existing horticulturists into the GDP is very, very low. It's below 1%. In Nigeria, I don't think uh, the populations are engaged in horticulture. They are up to, I don't even think they are up to 500 powder. They are not up to. If you take off those farmers that are engaged in cultivation of uh, vegetables and fruit, then on the aspect of ornamental, I don't think there are even up to 5,000 people that are engaged. National Horticultural Research Institute. It was established solely to research on horticultural plants. Fruits, pomology, floriculture, vegetables, and of course, a little bit of floriculture. There is not much work being done on floriculture. That's the truth. And that is why we are still you know, lacking. But in fruit, a lot of work has been successfully done in that place. I met a lot of good scientists who have worked on our soil, they have worked on our vegetables, they have worked on our fruits, and they have made a success of it. For instance, the vegetable you see, all these people growing vegetables there, growing today, the research work in Nihot brought them about. Okay, the fruit we are eating now, some of them, the research work there brought them about. For instance, look, look at pineapple for instance. The crown of pineapple, which was the only means of propagation in the past, they have been able to research there that cutting it into small bits, technically, and propagating, you can have up to up to 50 plantlets from the crown, from just one crown. In the past, we used to uh, propagate the crown alone. Just one crown stands for one plant. Though, I still feel that they could do more, but don't forget that the finances of all these research institutes lies in the hands of federal government. So how much they are providing for them to do the research will determine how far they can go. Part of the issues affecting horticulture and other areas of living, and this is not peculiar to Nigeria alone, is climate change. A lot, according to those who should know, has been altered in the area of agribusiness. I know that the harvesting on the field these days is not as high as it used to be in those days because of the negative effect that if our croppings are going through in recent time. I happen to have a farm where I tried cassava and maize last year. Because we were a little bit late in planting, we didn't get anything. And as far as I'm concerned, the moment rain starts, there is no reason why you should have a problem. But unfortunately, there was too much rain in April last year, stroke early May, which affected the harvest of the corn. 
In the three areas of horticulture, I want to believe that we have not started at all in Nigeria. If you ask me, I don't think we have yet started because we don't have enough research facilities to look after the problems. Go to uh, where market areas, where they dump oranges, mangoes during their seasons, you will see a lot of waste. If you ask me, maybe up to 50% of our harvest in Nigeria is being destroyed by carelessness, inadequate facilities for preservation, which I think is very unfortunate. From big gardens to smaller ones, those who tend to flowers and other edible plants appear happy to be in this line of business. If you don't have a mindset for it, you will not be able to do it. You have to be a passion, a person that is passionate about plants, about flowers. You have that passion for it, so it's going to be easier for you to do. But if you don't have passion for it, if you come, if you do want to, you get tired, you're like, ah, it's stressful and all that. But it's a, I can tell you, it's a very, very good business. It's a very nice business. And here we plant a lot of flowers, varieties of flowers, different kinds of flowers. Anyone you want, you can see them. We have the seasonal flower, then we have the non-seasonal flower. People that resign from offices, those graduates, they are into it now. We were having work before, but those that uh, finish the uh, graduate and they could not have a better job to do, they are into it now. So the work, the secretary's uh, work is very nice. It's very nice. People love it. People are coming in more. What could make those horticulturists happier is constant availability of water to nurture the plants, particularly during the dry season. Before you, uh, you establish a garden, you have to make provision for water. Because without the water, flower can grow. And to make it easy for you, you need a borehole. Because some water, during the dry season, they will dry, get dried off. So we made a borehole so to make it easy. So we buy a pop machine, then uh, dig a borehole, then from there we get the water to water it. And the, uh, the benefit of the plant is, when you get the water always, it will be more better uh, nourish than the uh, manure itself. Manure is to add the value to it, to make it fresh, but water is what they need mostly. So before anything or established garden, you have to have water. First thing, without water, you can't establish any garden at all. So that's the challenge that garden have. First of all, when you come to the business, you have exercise patients in it. Then when you cut a plant, sometimes you propagate from the plant. You plant a space of three, four months. You get roots and it will come harvest. Then, uh, like grasses like this, sometimes there's no customers. People like a space that where there's rain, they can buy something and plant it, it's easy for them to grow. But in dry season, there's no more strength for them to water the garden. So in dry season, they are hard with that time. So people normally put on us, but during the dry season, depending on how you take maintain your garden. Because where they, everywhere is dry up now, every leaf is dried up. But when you maintain your garden, water it, it's fresh, it will attract people to come. And it's not too easy. It's difficult. It's just uh, determine if you love flower. If you focus your mind on flower, it, then you, it will sound that it's difficult, but those that know about it, it's not too much about it. So we bring to nurse the flower as it is now, because we are nursing it here now. We are expecting customers to come and buy from us. So as we are nursing it now in this dry season now, it's difficult because water. You know, we don't have water to water. You buy water from tankers so that we keep the flowers alive. Despite the challenges, knowing that their efforts yield positive results is a push to continue. Plants are beautiful. They are living things. Taking care of plants is like taking care of yourself. Apart from the fact that we all know that 
you have lots of plants around, your air is fresh, you breathe in fresh air. But sometimes it might be moody and you drive past a park, you see the beautiful plants and you're like, wow, it's so beautiful, your mood is lifted. Plants, we have plants in forests everywhere, it helps in um, feeding our animals. So plants have different usefulness. It actually helps in um, preventing erosion for places where the roads are not sad. Plants, apart from flowers, you also have food, which is the agricultural land, which is also plants. So plants has different usefulness, different purposes to man. So if you take care of your plants, you take care of yourself. You could have a vegetable garden in your backyard. Plant your carrots, plant your water leaf, your bitter leaf, your ugu. That's a vegetable garden. You have plants around you. You could just beautify your house just to make it look beautiful. You could plant um, trees in it to create shade. Maybe you want to sit outside, you sit under the shade with friends, enjoy yourself. We all love to go to parks nowadays. Maybe we want to have pre ready shoots, we want to have a picnic with your friends. It's because the park is beautiful, plants around us. So if you keep emphasizing those benefits of plants around us, then we Nigerians will see the usefulness of plants or want to have also around us. I think it is very important that people must have gardens. It should be part of life. It should be part of life to have garden. The benefit is just not limited to, oh, I want to have a tree in front of my house. It's not limited to that. It's, you, 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 until you, you experience it, you, you are not likely going to, you know, appreciate it. But having a garden in the home is, have you ever, I don't know, have you ever seen an average home overseas? Whether you are watching the television or you are, maybe you travel out there. You will not see garden, no matter how small, in a house. It's not, it's not that uh, they just want to create garden now. It's because they know the importance of the plants in their environment. Firstly, even visually, you don't enjoy looking at concrete walls all the time. But when you now have even ordinary potted plants, you put them in pots and they grow nicely well. They punctuate the ashness of the world and they make a lot of difference. Don't forget that plants will release oxygen. They will imbibe carbon dioxide. Okay? In any environment you have plants, look at this place we are. Apart from the shade and the coolness, the air you are breathing will be fresher than if you go outside there. These are some of the advantages of plants in the environment. And here are a few tips for those who may want to embrace horticulture, not just as a hobby, but as a form of earning a living. Uh, like uh, other businesses, the advice is to go for training. That's number one thing, you go for training so that you have the uh, knowledge that is required of you to, to, to venture into the business. Number two is to make sure that you have passion for it, not only because horticulture is not a business that because you want to make money, you want to go into it. Your eyes will be fizzled out. You must, have, you must develop a passion for it. You must have a space. And then in that space, you must have uh, water. You must make provisions for water. You must make sure that your soil, you do soil test, make sure that your soil is okay. And then you also make provisions for uh, some uh, insecticides.
And that's a wrap for us on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. In the course of the show, we learned a lot about the community of horticulturists, those involved in the science and art of growing plants. So if you missed any parts of the show, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. See you next week.